from assistant coach to head coach at a brand new high school. And now he's got that program going in the right direction. He is Peter Abe, head football coach and athletic director at Portola High School in Irvine. And he joins us next on episode 33 of the Masters in Coaching podcast. Let's go. Well, welcome into another episode of the Masters in Coaching podcast here on iHeartRadio. Thank you for watching on YouTube as well. So excited to be back here in 2022. We've got a full slate of interviews to come this spring, and we're so excited for our first guest. He is the athletic director and head football coach at Portola High School in Irvine. Go Bulldogs. He is Peter Abe, and he joins us now. Coach, how are you? I'm living the dream. Well, first off, I appreciate you coming on the podcast. A little background about you. Uh, you grew up in Irvine. You went to Irvine High School. You went on to Cal State Fullerton and got your degree. Then you went through the Master's in Coaching Athletics Administration program at Concordia University, Irvine. Uh, you've been in teaching now for well over uh, 16 years, coaching for two decades. Uh, you've been entrenched in the schools, and we love that about you, Coach, and uh we, we want to thank you for that. And, and first off, just kind of dive into to how you got to where you are now as the head football coach at Portolo, uh, also athletic director. Is, is this where you thought you'd see yourself at this point in your career? Is this the, was this the end game for you, coach? You know what? I, I, I'd, I'd love to say that, you know, I'd want to be a teacher and a coach my entire life, but I actually went to Cal State Fullerton and, and retired from playing. I was, I was playing football and running track. Uh, and I had all aspirations. Just I wanted to be a athletic trainer. I had a you know great mentor at Irvine High. Uh, uh, rest in peace to Brooke. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, really inspired me to to you know work with athletes and and rehab, recovery, and all that. And some great teachers, uh, you know, that that were kind of steering me towards the physical therapy side of things. And and when we got to, or when I got to Cal State Fullerton, um, you know, started that track, the athletic training track and decided, hey, well, may as well try my hand at, at, at coaching a little bit while I'm at it. You know, full-time student, I'm getting off every day around two o'clock and, and our, our, head, our former head coach, Terry Hennigan, reached out and said, if there's any alumni local, you know, come, come take a stab at, at the coaching realm. So uh, once I joined the rank, you know, I couldn't get enough. And, and very quickly in that first year of college, uh, changed my track from athletic training to teaching and coaching. I, I right from the get go, I, I just couldn't get enough in terms of just, you know, being that role model for for students in need and, and really providing that consistency uh, with their development and that consistent trusted role model they can rely on in order to help help them grow and develop in, in the long run. So uh, very excited. Didn't think I would 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 go down this track, but it it definitely was was uh, a blessing in disguise so uh you know the rest is history the, the road that you got here after graduation getting your master's but along the way uh different stops teaching and being an assistant coach and and going yeah. to villa park and you were at irvine you're your alma mater for many years and you finally get the job in 2016 a, a brand new program coach absolutely I mean, you are starting from the ground up you're not inheriting a program you're not inheriting a, a young group you are starting from scratch to tell our listeners about that because it, it, it's a brand new high school and you are literally just starting from the ground floor you know what and eh. I think it it was maybe in the 10th year I was at Irvine High, you know, prepping to be a teacher, starting the coaching coaching deal. Uh, and like I said before, I had some great mentors and Terry Hennigan and Eric Terry. Um, they they really were class acts. They really did everything um, that I needed in order in order to support me and my goals, aspirations and dreams. And they were kind of the ones that were pushing me towards leadership. And so each and every year it was kind of, hey, let's let's add on this new task. Let's add on this new thing. And so, you know, going from, you know, freshman head coach to JV head coach to special teams coordinator, uh, you know, offensive coordinator, then was a head track coach and and all of those things, you know, then I, I come to find out that, you know, one of my my good friends now, Tom White, uh, started started a, a small little program for for coaches that wanted to either be head coaches, athletic directors. Uh, I want to say we're at, uh, I think it was called the Elephant Bar back then. It was over down in Clover <laughs> Plaza. And and we got to talking about his program and what he's trying to do. And we're like, 
why not? Why would I not want to be a part of a program that is helping coaches who have the aspiration of being coaches and leaders long term for student athletes? Why wouldn't I, you know, join a program and just see what it's all about even? So uh, let's just say Coach Coach White is is, is pretty convincing. He, he had a hard sell on 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 what Concordia was trying to do. And I believe strongly in what what they could provide even for me professionally. So um, got into it and had a fantastic experience and at the end of the day uh you know took that into a couple of years of being the athletic director at at our assistant athletic director at, at irvine high school um went a different route and taught the middle school as well pe i was coaching at villa park there for a couple of years uh, and all the while you know uh you know built off that portfolio that that kind of master's portfolio that you build at Concordia, you know, it, it forced me kind of out of my comfort zone to expand um, my knowledge, not just in terms of just coaching, but just being a professional teaching and leadership in general. And that's kind of when, you know, some of the mentors in my life were just kind of like, hey, like, you know, what do you think about being a head coach? You know what I mean, like, I, I honestly, it wasn't even a thing on my radar. I was really? thoroughly enjoying kind of what I was doing, where I was teaching coaching i was impacting just hundreds and hundreds of kids every single year through multiple sports you know i was teaching physical education um i even was in the uh, special ed department for a while at irvine video productions study skills there were so many different avenues um that i felt not not fulfilled but like that i was making an impact and it was yes. a significant impact for our community so i was kind of happy uh, and but if it wasn't for the Concordia program, I don't think I would have been able to realize the greater impact that I could have on not just hundreds, but maybe thousands, right, of, of, of young student athletes and, and even colleagues, right? So uh, I, I'm at Villa Park, I'm revamping my portfolio, I'm getting all this stuff together. And, and to be honest with you, it, it was a multiple sit downs you know, at some happy hours and things like that with some buddies when we started creating this thing, right? And we didn't even know what it really was at the time, but we kind of like with all of our experience, you know, at Irvine, at Villa Park, through the master's program and all of the other experiences that maybe they were bringing to the table, um, we kind of developed this program that we thought would be great. Like the program we not only would want uh, if we had to do high school all over again, um, but something that wouldn't just be about sports right but life in general and so that's kind of where our, our our program came to pass and so applied for the beckman high school job you know was fortunate enough to be be a finalist then but at that time in 2010 i was not even close right i was barely scratching the surface of being ready to to lead a program uh, a couple years down the line applied for the northwood job and Again, you, you become a finalist or you get offered the job and it just doesn't work out, you know what I mean? And so I said, you know what, wait in the wings, you know, and then rumors <laughs> had it that there was another school that was gonna be opening in Irvine. So, you know, bide your time, do the work, refine your programs, you know, try to build something that, you know, the community can be proud of. And I think everything hit at the perfect time. And, uh, you know, Portola opens up, I apply and the rest is history. How how has it gone for you starting from scratch with the freshman program and having freshmen and sophomores? And now I believe you guys just finished year six uh, yep. with your varsity team, a seven and four yep. season yep. last yep. year. Very good, very good season for you. Uh, and COVID mixed in there as well, which affected everybody. <laughs> and here you are trying to, to get a program off yeah. and, and get yeah. your own yeah. stamp on that program. Uh, where, where you're at right now after year six, uh, did you think you'd get to this point? Is it kind of the, the the same steps as you thought you'd get at this point? And what are you looking to continue to do? We always talk about protecting the bulldog pedigree. And that's, you know, the, the, the values that we're trying to build in young men through uh, the game of football. And now that I'm fortunate enough to be in the uh, position of athletic director through, you know, just athletics in general. And uh, to be honest with you, after the 2019 season, you know, great, successful year, first year of seniors, the whole deal, then COVID hits that very next spring. It, it really, uh, I don't want to say it put a damper on anything, but it kind of put everything, it just paused everything. Sure. And so we weren't really able to 
celebrate those seniors, that first senior class that we had at Portola couldn't have, you know, your traditional graduation and then COVID lingers, you know, for the next year, year and a half. And so um, even the next year, seniors had to go through all the modifications and all that stuff. And, and the entire time, I think, you know, on one half of my, my head, I'm like, you know, I'm so thankful that, you know, we, you know, for health and happiness and, and, and all that stuff, uh, you know, as difficult as it was on the kids, the support that we had at our, our, our school with our administration, our teachers and our coaching staff was fantastic. And so we all kind of collectively decided that, Hey, we're gonna, we're gonna be solution oriented. We're gonna find a way to get it done. And, and, cause you know, you know how it is. And the kids at the time were just clamoring for something. Exactly. Right. And after you get over that initial wave of kind of fear, you know what I mean? People get back down to earth and realize like, Hey, you know, health, fitness, you know, human interaction, like oh. that's needed, you know? And, and so we made our adjustments. We found a way, right? And district and the, and the county, uh, you know, told us, hey, what are the rules of the game? You know what I mean? So we all sat back, figured it out and, and, and made our adjustments. And, you know, like I said, went on to have another successful season in, in, in 2020 um, uh, for the program. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, when we get to, you know, even this year, a more normal year, mm -hmm. you know, you sit back and you talk with the coaching staff and you listen to the parents and you talk to the administration and, and, you know, fortunately, uh, I think we did well in, in, in starting this program up because everybody was like, hey, you keep doing what you're doing. You know what I mean? I think that what the program is doing to and for young student athletes has really made it easier for them not only to cope and manage um, the pandemic, but it allowed the best of what we were doing before the pandemic to continue. And so, you know, to be honest with you, what I wouldn't change a whole lot. Uh, we're always constantly practicing, you know, reflection, but at the end of the day, uh, we're very proud of our program, where we're at and kind of where we're going. So I look forward to uh, what 2022 is going to look like for, for our next batch of Bulldogs. Well said, coach. I had two daughters during COVID that played sports in high school and, and workouts, um, just getting out and doing stuff during the shutdown kept them sane. I truly believe uh, during that shutdown and sports is something they were able to, to gravitate towards with their friends, coaches, and, uh, and peers. I, I, without a doubt, believe it got them uh, through that COVID period. Peter Abe is our guest. He's the athletic director, head football coach at Portola High School in Irvine. Coach, you mentioned the Bulldog pedigree. The Bulldogs are, are the mascot there at Portola High School. Um, talk a little bit about the Bulldog pedigree, what it is, and how you came about uh, coming up with that foundation for your program. Uh, it, it's, it's based off of the 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 PHS pride values, right? Perseverance, respect, integrity, drive, and empathy. And and we said if if we want to build these these traits, these character values in in young uh, student athletes, you know, how are we going to do that? You know what I mean? And you know, obviously, you know, we play the game of football. How do we relate that to playing the game on the field and the same kind of struggles and challenges? And learning opportunities that you have on the field. How do we connect that to uh, prior knowledge and learning opportunities that they have off the field? How do we connect that to learning opportunities and, and experiences they have in the community? And so we sat down and talked about kind of, you know, obviously you want to protect, you know, the program, right? You want to you want to build up and lift up your teammates and help them develop and grow. You need to build a foundational level kind of process, right? Um, you, you, you want to put your best foot forward and, and present the program to the community. And at the end of the day, when it comes to the game itself, it's all about the football. You know what I mean? So uh, we talk about protect the pedigree there. There's uh, paw pads uh, of a bulldog right on, on, on their on their paws. And each of those paws represents a, a different not level, but just kind of foundational value that we want to uh, uh, hold our student athletes, our coaches our parents uh, to in and out of football. And it gives them kind of a blueprint to how to get this thing called success done both on the field and off the field. And if we're going to build a strong foundation that not only is gonna see success, you know you know how it is in the first you know, year two or three in, in, in any new school, it's like, oh, wildly successful. And then schools tend to, to drop off a little bit and become more like everybody else. And, and I think, here at Portola, we've never really kind of cared, you know, like about, you know, where we are in comparison to everybody else. And, and it was in the Concordia master's program where, you know, we, we 
kind of analyzed a book by a frosty westering you know entitled make the big time where you are right and it didn't matter you know what league you're in what level you played at whether you're at the freshman level jv varsity you know whatever it's like why can't you provide all the things that your community wants in an athletics program why can't you do that right and you see all these trainers and coaches and 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 uh you know, gyms and mm -hmm. camps and all of these things <laughs> that are at the disposal for your community. Why can't that be what you're providing for your community? And so I think as, as a school, and that's coming down from our leadership, uh, our administration, they, they really kind of hammered it in our head that, hey, we are going to do what's best for the Bulldogs and, uh, you know, build something here that our community is going to be proud of. And so the pedigree, like I mentioned earlier, it, it was a bunch of ideas, right, that we were just kind of hamming around uh, at, at happy hours, right, watching the game with, with, with coaching buddies and things like that. And it wasn't until we started really getting serious about applying for this Portola gig. I mean, not even the Portola gig. I mean, the, the pedigree kind of goes back, sure. dated back to even around the uh, when I was applying for the, the Beckman mm -hmm. high school job and the Northwood high school job. It just kind of morphed itself into a dog paw print but you could see how yeah. you know that could have been a could have been a timber wolf you know <laughs> paw that uh i don't know how, i forget how we did it with beckman it was something to do with you know their bee and their little stars around and it, <laughs> it, it 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 it's really morphed over the last several years and and I'm, I'm really proud to say that you know the way that we're doing it here at portola really is bringing out all that we really intended for the pedigree to be all about so uh, very excited. Very excited to see what this thing turns into over the next couple of years. Well, Coach, you have done a great job so far. I was reading up on you before our conversation. I was telling my wife how fired up I was to talk to you. And uh, I love your passion. I love your background. I love how you set the foundation for your program on and off the field to make these these student athletes, these young men for your football team, uh, better people on and off the field and, and leading them right in the right direction for success uh, when you hand them off uh, into the world outside of high school. So thank you so much. Our, our final thing, um, Concordia University of Irvine's Masters in Coaching Athletics Administration program, you went through it, you were there early on. Uh, it has grown into the nation's number one master's coaching program. Uh, 3,000 alumni in the network across the country. Uh, for those listening, those watching right now, uh, what would be your advice to, for those looking to maybe take that next step in their education one and to take that next step two in their career by this program? I'd say do it. I mean, and, and like I said before, I had already kind of been in uh, multiple years in the coaching ranks before I started uh, the program. And it, but it wasn't until I branched out and and forced myself to not only hear multiple diverse ideas, but to be able to sit back with trained professionals to analyze those things. You know, why does one thing work at one school and not another school? And, and, and how do I handle this situation versus that situation? It really forced you to think about not only the game, but just sports differently. Yeah. And it, like I said, I, I grew more in that those couple of years uh, kind of going through that transition. It, it, it just, it was probably the most valuable tool um, that I would say that kind of catapulted me to where I'm at today, because at the end of the day, it, it forced me out of my comfort zone. And so I couldn't be more thankful for, for my boy, uh, Tom White, you know, talking me into it over some, <laughs> over some, uh, uh, some jambalaya and, and breadsticks <laughs> at, uh, at, at Elephant Bar. And anybody that, that would listen, you know, I, I wouldn't do anything more than advocate for this program, it, it is definitely, uh, you know, it's 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 set the bar for professionalism in our field, athletic administration and coaching. So I can't can't wait to continue to provide as much as I can to help this program continue to thrive. Well, coach, we can't wait to see what uh, is in store for you guys this fall. The Bulldogs uh, football program, uh, exciting times ahead. I mean, unbelievable job uh, starting from the ground four, six years ago uh, with this high school football program at Portola. Thank you so much for your time, coach. We really appreciate yeah. it. I know the listeners and people watching uh, love to find out more about you, how you got to where you're at. You're uh, welcome. Your fundamentals, your fundamentals and your background, your foundation. So thank you so much. We appreciate it. Yeah, no, I appreciate you.